The Western Conference is filled with a lot of teams that can be a nightmare to play against. With insane talent all around, it's not easy to stand out. And perhaps that's one reason why the Pelicans have gone relatively unnoticed this season. But it's time to start talking about them and taking them seriously as they dismantled the Clippers last night on the road and let the rest of the league know they're modest. We just take it game by game to try to get better each game. They're hungry. Chiefs, win games, win games and get ready for the playoffs. And they're for real. As the only team besides the Celtics with three players scoring 19 or more a game, they're an incredibly well-balanced offensive team. They are fourth in passes per game, as almost everyone touched it on this possession. Ingram starts with get action through Larry Nance Jr., draws two defenders, and now they're playing in space making quick decisions. Not a triple threat in sight as CJ attacks the closeout and gets the shooter's roll on the midi. And that brings us to Zion Williamson, who has the greatest gravity for a non-shooter in the NBA. He's so dangerous off the dribble that teams simply can't handle him one-on-one. -on -one. But he's also a very good passer. With the Nance ball screen, he attracts two defenders, Harden has to rotate to stop the layup, and Zion makes the nice read to Dyson Daniels cutting out of the corner for a good finish at the rim. Late in the third, the Pelicans flipped his switch to on, sensing an advantage with Mason Plumlee guarding him. Watch how much space they give him, daring him to shoot the jumper, but a jump stop into a quick spin leaves the defense grasping at air. With a non-shooter who can handle the ball, it's great to set a ball screen for him near the block. This was actually weird that they wanted to screen Russ off of him, but like we saw earlier, Plumlee has no answer for the simple jump hook. As the Clippers made a run early in the fourth, the Pellies went right back to it with a few more defenders in the area to help, so Zion uses an off-foot layup to get it up slightly quicker than normal after Nance got to shove Plumlee out of the way. Nance then changes the angle of the screen to allow Zion to go baseline. The Clippers clearly wanted Plumlee to be the rotational help and it worked this time, but not really, as the deep penetration directly leads to the easy putback made worse by the foul for the and one. They attack Plumlee again with the inside ball screen from the right wing. With four guards around them, there is no second line of defense as Zion utilizes a delay tween cross to get right to the rim for the easy lefty lay-in. When the defense does do a better job to contain that pick and roll by playing Kawhi at center, we get some more good ball movement with CJ attacking on the catch to collapse the defense before Zion attacks as well and zips a nice little pass for an open three ball for McCollum. Playing off of Zion is a CJ specialty, as the defense has to bring support for Zubats on that left block. Problem is, it should not come from one pass away off of one of the deadliest shooters in the league right now. Just watching how much work CJ puts in on the offensive side of the floor, it's easy to imagine how hungry he must get right after the game. There's never any time to eat properly in those types of settings, and that's where Factor comes in. They deliver fresh meals from their team of gourmet chefs right to your doorstep. My wife and I wring our hands every night about what to eat for dinner, but not anymore. Factor delivers tasty meals right to my door, and all I have to do is heat and eat. Our dinner problems are solved. They've got a huge variety of meals to choose from, dietitian approved, including keto, calorie smart, veggie, and more. These are restaurant quality meals for less money than you'd spend on takeout, and they taste great. My issue has been that I try to keep my calories down during the day, and when it came time for dinner, I'd be starving and overeat. With Factor, not only is it incredibly easy to prepare, but I feel full, and I'm not busting through my calorie count. Head to Factor75.com or click the link below and use code BBALLBREAKDOWN50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and free wellness shots for life. Two free wellness shots from three available flavors for every order while you're an active subscriber. Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here. Welcome to BBALL Breakdown. I am here with CJ McCollum, friend of the Breakdown, uh, to talk a little about shooting. So CJ, first of all, uh, how did you know you were going to make all those shots to close out the game tonight? I just trusted the work, um, good balance, good foundation, a lot of reps, um, understanding of where I'm going to get shots at, and, uh, just really just uh, understanding why I'm at the basketball player. Catch and shoot uh, and versus pull ups. Do you know that you're the number one pull up three point shooter in the league right now? I know that now because you, you posted it on Twitter today. <laughs> I did. Uh, what's the difference between pull ups and uh, catch and shoot? Do you think fundamental? I think it's a rhythm, being able to get the feet right, balance, understanding right, left versus left, right, uh, how to dip. 
arc trajectory, if you're fading, if you're, if you're straight, uh, all those things I think play a factor, but I'm comfortable with uh, establishing the rhythm off the bounce for sure. Absolutely. Now, I'm thinking that the, the dip is a big difference between uh, the catch and shoot and the uh, off the dribble. Mm-hmm. People don't dip a lot when you shoot off the dribble. However, you do. And I teach this, I think, primarily from watching you do this. Do you remember how you developed this notion of, because basically you're making a, a dribble shot, a catch and shoot shot. Yeah, it's, it's about understanding how to, how to generate force, uh, how to generate uh, proper bounce, proper pop, if you will, to to shoot the ball up, especially with a closeout, especially going left or right or stepping back. Your momentum is going away from the basket generally, uh, to the left, to the right, or stepping back. So you got to be able to generate that extra force that you would normally have uh, with hot feet you know, going into a jumper. To top it off, they've got another score with the range and height to be a go-to crunch time tough shot maker in Brandon Ingram. As you can see last night, he can bail them out from the mid-range when the shot clock starts winding down, something every team needs deep into the playoffs when the defenses can take away your primary and secondary actions. On top of that, they've got the fourth highest three-point percentage in the NBA, and even though they don't take very many, it is a great way to keep the floor spaced so their big three can either get room to work with or suck the defense in and kick out for wide-open shots. I got to speak to Trey Murphy about his shooting and how he made the transition from college to the NBA. You, you shot really well in college. Was it any different coming to the pros and shooting in the NBA for you? Uh, really just timing. You know, guys are a lot better athletes. But overall, the shot mechanics and everything else stayed the same. You know, continue to you know, do the things I was taught when I was a young kid. Mm-hmm. Um, do you find that the actions are any different in the NBA for you when you're getting those shots? Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of movement. I mean, when I first came to the NBA, a lot of my stuff was catch and shoot because guys didn't really close out to me as hard. Mm-hmm. But now, since they're on my body, right now, I got to get a lot more movement shots going. So, you know, throw defense off a little bit. Do you have a favorite action in the offense you like to uh, when you want to get those uh, threes up? Yeah, I mean, a lot of slip actions with me and Z because of, you know, most of the time my man doesn't want to switch on to Z. So when I go up into the screens, a lot of times I'm calling out defensive coverages to try to throw off the you know, defending team so then I can get open shots as well. Another huge key to their success is their defense. Currently ranked eighth in defensive rating, this team has a lot of long athletes who have no problem instilling their mindset on the rest of the team. Murphy is one of those guys, although he won't take the credit for the way they get after it. No, I mean, I think it just starts with Herb Jones. Herb Jones is an all-NBA defender, first team all defense, and you know his infectious energy on the defensive end definitely uh, oozes out to the rest of us. I mean, I know for me, he always encourages me. He's like, yo, like two-way, two-way, both of us. And like, I always just hearing him in the back of my head saying, all right, we got guard, we got guard. It just definitely puts a lot of pressure on me to guard too. And the special weapon they have is the smallest guy in the league, Jose Alvarado. Aside from wreaking havoc on the entire NBA from just sheer hustle and quickness, he's developed a completely unique way to get steals from unsuspecting ball handlers. How did you develop this whole method and, and how is it so successful for you? I mean, it's just something I've been doing since I was probably a kid in the park and stuff like that. So, you know, I wanted to do something a little different. And I know I started doing it when I was doing it in, uh, in Oregon, like in professional games and it started working. So I just said, let's continue doing it. Well, do you feel like there's a, a connection between like hiding behind players that allows you to get this uh, those deals? I mean, you know, my thing is everybody call me small, right? So I'm gonna use my height to my advantage and you know, when I'm, everybody's so focused on the game and, you know, who wants to pay attention to a, a kid that you barely see in the corner, right? So um, that, that, that's just a little bit of the benefit, I guess, right? Have teams started scouting this? I mean, yeah. Um, what, what do they do when the, to, that you know? They just you know, know every time I'm in a game just to be prepared of that. And then, you know, some teams are really good at it and some teams are not good at it sco- scouting it. So. I hear it. Well, I got another clip in there we showed you is how you tap the ball from behind. And uh, that's a skill that a lot of players don't have, right? You get benched if you try and reach from behind. Um, I'm going to tell you this. I invented a new defense. It's a zone where you play behind the ball. Oh, wow. Can you give us some insights into individual skills you can uh, that help you I tap mean, that ball from behind like that, like you do so I mean, well? I don't think it's like, I think it's more of just a feel of the game. You know, the ball got to come your height eventually, you know, mm-hmm. you got to dribble it. So you just got good timing in, and if it's there, it's there. You know, sometimes it's not going to work, sometimes it is. You got to well, just live with it. I'm thinking that you time it when the ball hits the ground, you begin to steal so that it's up at the hand when you get the hand. Does that sound familiar? That sounds that sound pretty good, decent right there, yeah. All right, okay, well, guess what? When, when the NBA starts running it, you're going to be the guy on the top waiting for him, all right? <laughs> I appreciate it. So in the end, this is the team that no one wants to play in the playoffs. They've got a monster in the paint, a guard who can score from anywhere on the court, and a forward who can ISO with the best of them. 
plus perfect complimentary role players and a coach with a good game plan that gets these guys playing hard. As long as they stay healthy, they've got a good shot at the second round of the playoffs. And if they increase their three-point frequency a bit and get hot, they might get even farther.